Hi, this is Paul from Third Space Learning, and today we're going to look at the laws of indices. Now, they tell us how to simplify expressions and calculations that have the same base. That's just the same big number or letter. There are three main laws. Let's have a look at them. So the first law of indices is when we are multiplying together terms with the same base. All we do is add the powers. The second law is when we are dividing terms with the same base. We subtract those powers. And the third one is when we have a power outside of a bracket. And all we're going to do is multiply those powers together. Let's take a look at each law in a little more detail. So the first law of indices we'll look at is when we are multiplying terms together with the same base. All we have to do is add the powers. So for example, if we had a to the power of 3, so a times a times a, and we multiply that by a to the power of 2, a times a, well altogether there we have a to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's the same as 3 add 2 is 5. So all we do is add the powers. Let's take a look at an exam style question to see how this works in practice. Part A says simplify a to the power of 6 multiplied by a. Now this is actually just a to the power of 1. Laws of indices tell me when I'm multiplying terms together with the same base, in this case a, I can just add the powers. So this is the same as saying a to the power of 6 plus 1, which is just a to the power of 7. So let's pop that on the answer line. Part B, pause the video and have a go. See how you get on. Okay, let's go through this one. So this has a little more going on. We've got 3 multiplied by d to the power of 5, multiplied by 3, multiplied by d squared. Now, because this is multiplication, I can multiply these in any order I want. So let's do the numbers first. 3 times 3 is 9. Right, let's look at the d's now. So we've got d to the power of 5, and we're going to multiply that by d squared. Well, laws of indices tell me when we have the same base, d, and we multiply, I can add the powers. So that's d to the power of 5 plus 2, which is d to the power of 7. Let's put it all together. The final answer is 9d to the power of 7. Part c. Very similar, but with a little more going on. So let's do the same thing as we did in part b. Let's start off with the m's. So this is m to the power of 4 multiplied by m, but it's actually, remember, m to the power of 1. Laws of indices tell me to add those powers, so it's going to be m to the power of 4 plus 1, which is m to the power of 5. Let's look at the n's. So we've got m to the power negative 3 multiplied by n to the power positive 3. And again, laws of indices tell me to add those powers. So negative 3 plus 3. Now, thinking of the number line, negative 3 plus 3 is going to be 0. So this is just n to the power of 0. And n to the power of 0 is 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So let's put the answer on the answer line. It's just m to the power of 5 multiplied by 1, which is just m to the power of 5. Let's see where the marks come from. So part A, one mark for the answer. Part B, one mark for the 9, one mark for d to the power of 7. And on part C, we're going to get two marks for writing m to the power of 5. Now, if you make a small mistake and you write n to the power of something here, don't worry. As long as you've still written m to the power of 5, you will get one mark. Let's take a look at the second law of indices. This is where we are dividing terms. We subtract those powers. So, for example, if we had a to the power of 4, that would be a times a times a times a, and we divide that by a to the power of 2. So, on the numerator, we'd have a times a times a times a. On the denominator, we'd have a times a. And we can divide a by a. So, a divided by a is 1, and we can do that again a divided by a is 1. So what we're left with here 
is just a times a, which is a squared. So all we've done there is subtracted the powers. 4 subtract 2 is a to the power of 2. So let's have a look at this in an exam style situation. So part A says simplify 3 to the power of 9 divide by 3 to the power of 5. Now the laws of indices tell me when I'm dividing terms with the same base, I can just subtract those powers. So this is 3 to the power of 9 subtract 5, which is just 3 to the power of 4. Pause the video for part B and have a go. See how you get on. Okay, let's go through it. Now, let's start with the numbers first here. We've got 12 divided by 4. Well, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay, let's look at those f's. So we've got f to the power of 8 divided by f. Now, it's not just f. It's always f to the power of 1. Laws of indices tell me when I'm dividing terms with the same base, I can subtract those powers. So it's f to the power of 8 subtract 1, which is just f to the power of 7. Let's bring it all together. The answer is 3f to the power of 7. Part C. OK, now it's a little more going on here, but we're going to do it in exactly the same way. So let's start with those x's x to the power of negative 1 divided by x to the power of 6. Well, laws of indices tell me I can subtract those powers because I'm dividing terms with the same base. So this is x to the power of negative 1 take away 6. Well, negative 1 take away 6 is just negative 7. Let's see what the y's look like. So we've got y to the power of 5 divide by y to the power of negative 1. Right, I've got to be really careful here. So it's y to the power of 5 subtract negative 1. I'm taking those powers away. So 5 subtract negative 1. OK, now we've got a negative and a negative next to each other there. So I know that's a plus. So we, this is exactly the same as saying y to the power of 5 plus 1, which is just y to the power of 6. Let's bring it all together. We've got x to the power of negative 7, y to the power of 6. And there's my answer. Let's see where those marks come from. So question 1, one mark for the answer. Part B, we get two marks. So one mark for 3 and one mark for f to the 7. And for C, just one mark for the correct terms. The third law of indices is when we have a bracket and a power. All we have to do is multiply the powers together. The power inside the bracket by the power outside the bracket. So, for example, if we had a to the power of 2 in a bracket, all to the power of 3, we would do 2 times 3, which is 6. So it would be a to the power of 6. The reason that works is because a squared to the power of 3 is the same as saying a squared multiplied by a squared multiplied by a squared. And the laws of indices, that first law of indices we looked at, tells me I can add the powers together when I'm multiplying. So 2 add 2 add 2 is 6. So it's a to the power of 6. But a quick way of doing it is just to multiply the powers together inside the bracket and outside the bracket. So let's see how we can apply this to an exam style question. Part A says simplify b to the minus 2 all to the power of 5. Right, now laws of indices tell me I can just multiply those powers together. So it's negative 2 multiplied by 5. Well, negative 2 multiplied by 5 is negative 10. So this is b to the power of negative 10. Pause the video and have a go at part b. Right, let's have a look. So there's a little more going on here. And we need to be careful to apply the minus 3 outside those brackets to everything inside those brackets. So we've got f to the power of 3, g to the power of 1. Always to the power of 1. And let's deal with these terms separately. So let's start with the f. Well, this is f to the power of 3. 
and we're going to apply that third law of indices and multiply the power by the power outside the bracket. So it's 3 multiplied by negative 3. Well, 3 multiplied by negative 3 is just negative 9. Let's look at the g. So we've got g to the power of 1. And we're going to multiply that power by the power outside of the bracket, which is negative 3. 1 multiplied by negative 3 is negative 3. So that's g to the power negative 3. Let's put it all together. We've got f to the power of negative 9, g to the power of negative 3. Part C. Very similar, but this time we've got a number in there as well. So we're going to deal with it in exactly the same way as we did with B. This 2 is actually 2 to the power of 1. So let's start by looking at this 2. So it's 2 to the power of 1, and we're going to multiply that by the power outside that bracket, which is 3. 1 times 3 is 3, so this is 2 to the power of 3. Now that means 2 times 2 times 2, which is just 8. Let's have a look at the c. So this is c to the power of negative 4. And we're going to multiply that power by the power outside of the bracket. So times by 3. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. So that's c to the power of negative 12. Brilliant. Let's put it all together. We've got 8c to the power of negative 12. Let's see where those marks come from. So one mark for part A for the answer. Two marks for part B, one mark for each term. And for part C, again, one mark for each term. Thanks so much for watching the video. Check out the description below for loads more information on this topic and for access to our library of free online resources and loads of information on our one-to-one -one tuition. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest third space learning videos.